Hi, welcome to our video demonstration of Quick Surface 2026. In this video, I would like to go through the new features that we introduce in our new release and provide you more details. The new Quick Surface 2026 version is using Siemens Parasolid kernel, which allows us to introduce new features that are typical for a standard cut modelers and will allow you to create your project even more efficiently. I think the best way of showing this is just go through a small project and highlight the tools that we have created. What I'm going to do right now is to go and remodel this shape and then during this process you will find out the new features. Let's quickly begin and start reconstructing this. I'm taking a look at the file I have already aligned so I'm going to reconstruct the top one, then we'll create this one, and so on. Quickly, we'll create a 2D sketch here for this main body. I'm going to use our sketch assist, which works quite well in this case. Go to the select option to pick what I need and to get the outer control. As I have this now, I can use our extrude command. And as you know, in the previous versions, I can just enable the snapping mode and then this will mm, pick the, the mesh here. Then I can drag this all the way down to go through the main body. So the first feature, which is new, is the interactive draft. What I mean is that using this slider, you can just place and find in real time the deviation of what is the best um, draft angle here. What I just find in this my experiment is this probably 0 0.5 degrees is good enough. As you can see, this is because of the design intent. I can just leave it. So this is quite a nice and uh, good feature. The other thing that I need now is to how to recreate this side shape. It looks like revolved, but it's not. So it's kind of a complex loft shape. And here is what I'm going to do. I'll pick my body and I'm going to use our um, surfacing command, which will be offset a shape. The offset shape is also allowing you in real time to just uh, play and offset this uh, body. But in this case, I probably need not the, the solid, but just um, the side faces. So you have an option that it says just selected faces only. So I can just uh, pick this, uh, we'll reset this, and then I can just pick the faces that I need to offset. So this is the interactivity here that I can use, and then I can just play all, only with this face. When I find a good position here, which in this case is probably four millimeters, I can just press OK. Now what we also have as a functionality is that some of the bodies created are multiple of uh, different shapes. In this case, you can see it says nine, which means this body plus all the faces. So what we have here as a helper function is the function which is called separate bodies. This will actually create a new shapes from these so I can have much more freedom. I'm going to select all these faces now and we'll um, use the surfacing surfaces to recreate one single shape. Now, this is important here where the transition should be. So what I'm going to do is create my plane here quickly. Next right plane and we'll do the trimming. I just want to get exactly this uh, precise uh, shape here. With the standard trimming, I can just get rid of the unnecessary shapes. This was my goal to be super accurate here. So, so far so good. I will just hide this for now and I'm trying to get an outer uh, shape. I'm going to create a 2D sketch, which will define this transition from here to here. Because this is a plastic uh, part, really it's uh, eyeballing where this should go. And I'll just pick this one and we'll create it. Using the sketch assist, I can just easily, okay, this probably fails, too many circles or I can just use the extract primitives because this is not a nice circle. I can just use the manual 
uh, circle fit like this one so I can take the, the shape I can go back and perhaps I just make sure that everything is in the center and now what I'm going to do will create from the center another um, circle what I'm trying to do instead of extrusion and so on just to create a, a surface here and this is the other feature that we introduce which is called uh, surface from 2D sketch that will simply will create um, solid faces that are into our 2D sketch. I'm going to use this for my really advanced um, loft command. What I try to do is just get these two connected. How can I do this is by using the loft command. This is really powerful function which a lot of details but uh, for now I'll just uh, stick to solve my problem. How it works I can just pick this cut edge here and then I can pick this. What happens is that the software shows me where this starts and this is on the other side and I can just simply drag and adjust how these two points match something like this. These two arrows show me when the orientation which is important to be able to define this loft. But why I'm doing all this is because if I look at the, the shape here, it's really it is um, not straight. So what I need to do is just create continuity. If by pressing here, I can toggle between a contact con and a tangency or curvature. And just by clicking on it, it will change. But what we have also here is handles that allow you to put some weights here so you can adjust this. Um, shape in the, in the best possible way. Probably here I also need to leave it as a tangent so I can get a nicer transition so you can play with this. We have a drag strand here that you can uh, play how easy you can just uh, drag this. So I hope you, you get the idea of how to recreate this shape. Once I'm happy with this I can just uh, press OK and I created my really nice uh, loft. What I Next do is picking this shape, we'll go to cut and delete all the faces that I not needed. I use this only to define my uh, transition and complexity here. So I managed to recreate this. What the next step should be for me is to fill this uh, hole on top. Here is what we have in the surfacing, which is called the fill surface command. It's known from the before, but how it works, I can just pick automatically, it become contact because it's flat. But here are the options, you can make it tangent that will make this transition in a tangent way, or you can just use it with the curvature, which is insane in this case. So definitely I just want to use it a contact. This will create my shape here. And if we look, we wanted to, to do a little bit more here just to, to get this gap. Let me just create another quickly uh, to the sketch. This is not something new. I just pick it here. We'll create. And now instead of using the scan data, honestly, I'll be using the uh, snapping that will just get the uh, point directly from the other cut features. The reason for this is that I want to make sure that everything is perfectly matching so that the two will be connected together. I don't need a solid here, something like this. And we'll leave it for now. Um, perhaps actually give some depth for this uh, shape and press OK. What we need to do now is do some trimming. Go and use the trim command, get rid of this so I can get this connected. So as you can see, we're slowly moving um, towards our um, building shape. I'm going to use our trim command now. Just uh, we'll get rid of this so I can just build this. What we also have is the ability to actually move a face. Uh, how this uh, works, let me just create a sketch here. I can create it on top. Actually, let me just uh, get information, but I'll just leave it uh, on the top. We'll create this shape. 
In this case, I want to recreate the, the inner shape with a simple marking. We'll extract these uh, side uh, lines. We'll automatically connect, create a fillet like this, and I have my sketch. I'm not going to do any extrusion now for the demonstration. What we can do is trimming now with the sketch and, um, and the surfaces. You can remove, of course, if you want to. I can control Z. But what I want to do in this case is just keep this face, press OK. What I have now is that this face is available in on the on the surface and I can use our cut feature which is called move face. I can just pick this and start dragging and you can see that it generates this um, uh, face here. I can always just turn, turn the analysis mode so I can see how accurate this is and I can just play this where I want to be. So I hope you got the idea about the, the move face. What next I would like to show you is the ability to actually do some shelling and thickening. Let me just go again and uh, fill this surface at the bottom. The reason for this is I'd like to create a solid. And now I'm going to use the shell command. Just picking this um, face, we'll go and in the cut we'll use the shell. You can see it created this shell and I can just interactively play to see my uh, shelling what I want this to be. I'll leave it for now with these values and move again to, if you remember our move face command, we'll pick this, say I'd like to move a face, pick this one and just start dragging it to make it higher. What I would like to show you here just for a demonstration is that we introduce also a fillet which is called a face round fillet. How it works, you just put pick the side face, you can pick the top one, and then you can pick the, the other side, you can preview, and you can see nice and smooth transition between three faces. But let's get back, and I forgot that here I probably want to do something which is um, offset, make this a, a little bit more thicker. If you remember, we have this move face. I can pick this, but the problem is I don't want to move it, I just want to offset it. So we have an option here that you can also play with this and you can just start moving the face and it will be offset. So you see all these functionality is available now and I can press OK. So this is um, my shape built so far. You can of course go and um, do other uh, stuff, but um, quickly let me just um, do a little bit more. We'll just go and create a 2D sketch on the side. We'll just outline, nothing new here. We'll create. I just want to make a cut here. We'll just uh, do this, fit these shapes. Actually, I made this wrong. I will just uh, tell you why because. I created this, the, um, the shell, but it's a little bit too early to do this shell before I actually reconstruct the top. So I'll leave this for now. And let me go and delete the shell. It was a good for a demo so far. Let me just extrude this. More turn off the snapping because I don't need it. We'll make it like this. There is no need for analysis. And here, of course, you can use the cut command that will just uh, take this off from the shape. And then, of course, you can just do the, the shell operation again. The reason I'm doing what I show you now is to like to show a little bit on the fillet. I can go in the fillet command and pick. It selects the, um, the tangency. You can also select faces. You have undo, but I'm trying to get this contour. What we introduce here is the ability to automatically ask the software to try to find. It just turns on immediately into this uh, tolerance mode, so you can adjust this and it can save you a lot of time. You can see this, how nice and smoothly it works. But also, what we have, uh, just for demonstration, is the ability to use uh, what is called a variable field. 
variable fillet has two handles at the end, so you can independently play with this. Of course, always with the tolerance mode, you can just adjust this and play, or I can just handle this on the other side. We have control what type of fillet you can use. It can be curvature based, or it can be circular, or it can be asymmetric, like you can just play in a, in a, with the slider to get a different one, or you can make it EQ. But if you want to make a real, um, how can I say, a variable fillet, I can just come and pick a point here, and this will introduce where the other variable fillet is, and you can just play and make um, amazing things, such as here. I can just try and move this along my preselected shape and I can just give a different value. If I want to introduce somewhere else here, and you can do this, I'm sure you can find different applications how you can uh, apply this variable fillet and it's really, really powerful and interesting for different applications. The other thing I would like to say is that once you complete your project, you can export as a step or IGES, but what we also support now is the ability to export as a pure parasolid file that will allow you to import easily into the other type of project. So these were just really basic tools that we introduced. I hope you liked them and I'm looking forward to see a new great project that you can create. Thank you for watching.